It's not our aim to frighten you this close to summer, but it might be a good idea to pause just for a moment before diving into the sea to consider this. Right now, Australia is riding a growing wave of shark attacks. In the last year, more than half of the deaths caused by sharks around the world happened here. As a result, there's now some extraordinary technology being used to keep us safe, but researchers have also made a surprising discovery. It looks like we're to blame for the boom in shark bites. It's a good day to catch a wave, and on Sydney's northern beaches, the surfing crowd is out in force. Getting ready to join the throng is Chantelle Doyle, who bears the scars of a frightening encounter with a great white shark. It's been a long and challenging 15 months of microsurgery and intensive physio to get to this point, bravely back in the water while still slowly recovering from a daunting injury. I've had a very hard year with rehab, um, but I'm pretty good. We're pretty good. We're getting there. How, how do you feel when you look down and, and see that scar these days? It's just part of me now. Chantelle was a latecomer to surfing, but took to it like a grommet to water. And last year, while on a trip to Port Macquarie with husband Mark, the couple found the perfect day to hit the ocean. Were sharks a consideration for you whenever you went surfing? Like, would you look at a beach and think, is this dangerous? For me, yes. Often, if it was dawn or dusk or murky water or there was shoals of fish around, I would think sharky. And what was your read this day? Nothing. <laughs> it was just bright, sunny, beautiful. Water was super clear. It, it was a beautiful day. A blissful day's surfing was in store, but at 9.30 in the morning, out behind the breakers, a great white shark was lurking. I just felt a thud underneath my board. It hit my leg straight away. Like, just bang, grab. Like, I could just feel the pop, 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 pop of my skin. Was there a moment where you thought, I might not survive? Like, I did not think anyone was coming to help me. As luck would have it, Mark was only 10 metres away. With the shark still locked on her leg, what he did next was extraordinary. I could see the fin and the head just out of the water. Um, down near her calf. So I just ditched the board to just start wailing punches into it so I could get it off. So you just started throwing haymakers? Pretty much, yeah. It was just, just throw as hard as, and as many as you can until it lets go because you sort of just want it to be gone. Were well, you looking it in the eye? Dead set in the eye, yeah. That memory sits with me a lot because I remember it being a black eye and that's why I kind of, as I hit the nose, I kind of thought, well, aim for it, you know. Maybe it's more sensitive. The flurry of blows worked and the shark finally let go. Helped by Mark and other surfers, Chantel made it back to the beach where she was airlifted to hospital. 15 months on, her recovery is still very much a work in progress. The biggest problem is the complexity. It means that muscle, bone, ligament, tendon, nerve, everything gets done. Most parts of my leg were injured except for my arteries. Uh, and if my artery had been hit. Yes. You're not here, mate. I'm not having this conversation with you. It's early morning off the mid-north coast of New South Wales, and the hunter has become the hunted. But there's no killer instinct here. Instead, Department of Primary Industries researcher Dr Paul Butcher is heading up a fishing expedition of a different kind. We're setting smart drum lines in the hope of catching and tagging one of these awe-inspiring but much maligned creatures. What's the quickest you've had one take the bait? 30 seconds. We just put one in one minute ago. We could turn around and get an alert on our, on our phones in a minute. Tell us that there's a shark on. Now we play the waiting game. That's it. Could be one minute, could be all day. It's, that's part of fishing. <laughs> Big sharks are prolific in this area, 
and it only takes a couple of hours before the alert is sounded that those infamous jaws have latched on to our hook. Good size white. Yeah, you're right there. If you have a look down now. Oh, wow. There he is. This one is a juvenile, a 2.6 metre long great white shark, the most feared predator of the deep. Uh, have a look at those teeth. You can see why they do so much damage. There's plenty of controversy around the best way to handle the danger posed by sharks like this. But in New South Wales, indiscriminate shark nets and catch and kill drum lines are destined to become a thing of the past. Instead, a push is underway to improve surf safety through technology, with catching and tagging them just the beginning. We're now the, the world leading scientific group in, in tagging sharks and, and we've got the largest number of white sharks tagged anywhere in the world. So around 700 odd white sharks, 200 tiger sharks and nearly 200 bull sharks as well. How important is this information that you're gathering? Knowing where sharks are, what they do, where they're going to move to is a big part of the new technologies that we're rolling out and we now understand when they're going to be on our beaches, where they migrate to, what they eat, uh, how big their population size is as part of the genetic analysis. So it's all combining into our beach safety program. Are you confident this is actually going to save some lives? Yeah, it's hard, hard to monitor whether, um, f whether the program is successful because shark bites are, are, are rare, but they're traumatic events and, and, and we want something in place that's going to be effective and reduce the number of bites that we see. Good evening. WA has been rocked by another suspected fatal shark attack, this time at a popular Perth beach. If you feel like the number of shark attacks has been on the rise, you're right. The father of two attacked by a shark off a North Fremantle beach. The latest deadly incident came only a fortnight ago in Perth, when 57-year-old local Paul Millerchip was killed on his morning swim. Look, there's no doubt there's been an increase in the number of shark bites, including fatal shark bites, over the last few years. Uh, the long-term average is normally one to two um, shark-related fatalities a year. We've seen spikes. Um, you know, in the last couple of years, we've seen uh, you know, six, seven, eight fatalities. Dr Nathan Hart is a world-leading animal neurologist who's devoted his work at Macquarie University to learning more about what motivates these apex predators to bite through an intriguing combination of shark biology and psychology. So your job is basically to get inside the mind of a shark. That's right. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, imagine taking one of the most amazing, um, powerful predators uh, that there is in the, in the living world and trying to get inside their head and, and understand how they see the world, how they, they sense the world. When a shark goes for a human, do, do they actually know what they're going after? Look, it's a really interesting question. A shark is obviously going in either for food or as an exploratory approach. It doesn't have hands, it has to use its mouth. And so uh, there's a real possibility that, that what the shark thinks of as prey isn't actually prey. Mistaken identity. It could be, yes. Um, we're not saying that every, every bite on a human is a result of mistaken identity. What we don't want is, is people thinking that sharks are, are out to get humans. I think that's very far from the truth. Instead, he puts the increase in shark encounters down to one simple fact, that people and sharks are mixing more now than ever before. Australia now accounts for more than half of the world's total number of fatal shark bites. Yep. Why are we ground zero for this problem? There's just more people in the water and more people in the water year round. Obviously, with improvements in things like wetsuits and just the growth in population and usage of the beaches means that uh, more people are there. And so we see greater overlap between sharks and humans. I don't think sharks have changed their behaviour. It's, um, it's just the circumstances. So, more encounters, more attacks. The question is, how do we stay safe in the surf this summer? Dave Pearson is a good old-fashioned adrenaline junkie. Whether it's hitting the road on his bike or heading out into the surf chasing a wave. The ocean's where I take my problems and wash them away. The salt water is, everyone will tell you about salt therapy. It is great. The salt water just is magic. Surfing is a game of risk versus reward for Dave. 
Of course, the reward is the pure joy he gets on a wave. But the risk where he surfs on the New South Wales mid-north coast is very real. Are you scared of sharks? Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah. They hurt. Huh? And they change your life. Dave knows they hurt all too well because he was attacked by a bull shark in 2011 at a secluded beach at Crowdy Head. It was the middle of the afternoon as he paddled out in a rip and suddenly was flipped in the air. The shark had probably come from really deep water and um, as it charged up with its mouth open, it hit the bottom of my board and its nose actually hit me in the side of the head and basically knocked me out. And my arm got caught between the surfboard and its top jaw and we went down to the bottom together. Did you know exactly what was happening? Not at all. I was... So you didn't even think shark? No. No, I was, you know, for want of a better term, what the fuck's going on? You know, it's just like being king hit at the pub. I was stunned and I looked down at my arm and I could see, like, a section of bone. It wasn't broken, but I remember thinking, wow, bones really are white. You know, it was stupid. And um, I was watching blood squirting probably past you and I went, that was a shark. The scar on Dave's arm is these days covered by a tattoo commemorating the day he was attacked. You know, my, my tattoo actually says survivor because it's a strong word, it's an important word. The mental scars, though, are harder to hide. That's why he founded Bite Club, an organisation supporting literally hundreds of shark bite survivors. You've started a, a club now that I'm very interested in, but I never want to be a member of. Like it is the best club in the world to be involved in, you just don't want to be involved in the initiation. So, yeah, it's tough. It's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek name, and it was to do with Fight Club. Um, you know, Fight Club, you don't, first rule is you don't talk about Fight Club. The first rule of Bike Club is you talk about your experience amongst the members. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we get from the group. It's the support from someone who, you don't have to say a word, you know, you can lose yourself halfway through the conversation and they know. Preventing shark attacks is the aim of researcher Dr Paul Butcher. And out on his boat, I'm somehow tasked with taking swabs of this great white shark's teeth. We're looking at bacteria that grows on the teeth and the gums and, and, and what they're eating and, and what little pathogens uh, are in there. So we're going to hand this over to you now. The information gathered is being used to improve treatment of shark bites in humans. This wasn't part of my journalism course, but I think I've got the hang of it. Finally, with its teeth swabbed, its measurements taken and tag fitted, this great white shark's pit stop is over. Off she goes. Off it goes. Well done, mate, your first great white. So Hopefully I'll uh, never get that close. <laughs> Every catch helps, and by tracking the sharks they've tagged, Paul and his team have made some amazing discoveries about the incredible distances great whites in particular can cover. I was looking at some of the maps of where these sharks have, have travelled after they've been tagged. It is amazing. That's right, we now have animals that have travelled over 40,000 kilometres in a three year period. Not only just moving up and down the east coast of Australia, we've got them moving to Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, New Zealand. They know where they're, they're going, it's not ad hoc in, in where their movement patterns are. They've got straight lines, they know exactly where they need to move to. Down the New South Wales coast, a new fleet of drones is being rolled out in what's now the largest shark program in the world. Eyes in the sky that capture so many sightings like these, warning oblivious surfers and swimmers by loudspeaker of the danger lurking close by. Shark warning, shark warning. For long serving surf lifesavers like Emma Gale, they are the new front line of defence against shark bites. When you first started out, how did you look for sharks? Well, you would have someone with binoculars doing a, a scan, you know, out over the ocean. So. It'd be hit and miss. It's kind of like you've gone from horse and cart to uh, Formula <laughs> One car all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've got all the technology, we can see everything moving. Yeah, oh, it's great. Many more smart drum lines and listening stations, which send out alerts when tagged sharks pass by, are also being rolled out. For researcher Dr Paul Butcher, every warning of a shark in the vicinity could potentially be a life saved. 
Do you think it is now safer because of these new technologies coming online? There's certainly no silver bullet in, in, in making our beaches safe, using smart drum lines through satellite technology, using drones and artificial intelligence to be able to see down through the water and let us know what's there that's going to be effective and reduce the number of bites that we see. Other technological breakthroughs could be just around the corner. Animal neurologist Dr Nathan Hart has closely studied the eyes of sharks and it turns out they are way behind us in how they see the world. So sharks just don't have the best eyesight. That's right, so we know that most sharks are completely colour blind. They also don't have the same kind of detail vision, the same resolution of vision that we do and that may be a reason why, why some sharks, especially white sharks, bite people. From early experiments, Nathan and his team have developed arrays of underwater lights that appear successful in deterring shark bites. Based on our work on the visual system, we're trying to manipulate the, the appearance of an object on the surface uh, and change how that would appear to a shark. So you think that the future of surfboards could be lights underneath to keep sharks at bay? Look, I think it's a, it's a really promising uh, avenue uh, from our research. Um, it, it's not that every, every bite that occurs is, is mistaken identity, but even if we're able to save a few lives, I think this is a really great development. With a coastline the size of Australia's, home to the three most fearsome sharks in the world, we'll never be able to prevent every shark bite. But in reality, they are incredibly rare. When I paddle out, because I was sort of attacked straight out from where we are now, it's when I get to that spot on my own, it's, I sometimes have a moment, most times not, but sometimes have a moment. Dave Pearson knows just how brutal a shark attack can be, but he believes we all have the power to improve our safety by weighing up the risks when we enter their domain. First thing I do is scan the ocean. Like, I'll stand there for five minutes or so just looking at what's going on. Am I seeing any fish? Am I seeing any birds? What's the water like? Is it looking murky? Is it looking clean? The funny thing is, I, once, once I get dressed and I, I strap my leg rope on, when I put the leg rope on, I always say to myself, remember today you could die. And um, it's just puts it in my head that, you know, that when I'm gonna get out in the ocean, I'm going to be aware of what's happening while I'm out there as well. And so I'm gonna do everything I can in my power to limit that risk if I can. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.